Welcome to worship this morning. Just a couple of announcements for you. First of all, we want to welcome any guests or visitors who are here worshiping with us. Um, we hope that you've all gotten bulletins and a bowl that has our communion elements. We will be using those later in the service today. Couple of announcements. We are blessing our community garden today and those who serve and work on that. So we'll be asking those who work on that toward the end of the worship service to stand so we can acknowledge and pray for them and ask blessings on our continued garden. One other announcement that I want to remind people is, although we send our newsletter out electronically, if you do not have access to it electronically, or you desire a paper copy, or you know somebody who does, would you, you for yourself, and if you know somebody who desires a paper copy and is not getting it, have them give the church office a call. We'll be glad to uh, print it and mail it out. And as always, we have paper copies available here at the church. So if you would get that word out once again that we do um, print paper copies for those that are in need of them, we would greatly appreciate it. With that, I don't believe we have any other announcements from anybody. All right, then let's begin worship. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray together. O oh God, powerful, powerful and, and compassionate, compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. See you. 
Scripture reading is from Jeremiah 23. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant out of my flock, out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor will any be missing, says the Lord. These days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm is Psalm 23, which we will read responsively. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along the right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. All right, I'm going to invite the children forward for a quick children's message. And come on over. Even if you think you're too big for the children's sermon, come on down today because I have something for you. I promise I won't bite. Good morning. I am so glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about resting. And Jesus invites his disciples to come away with him and rest. And one of the ways we can rest, what are some ways you rest? Anybody have any ways they like to rest? Sleeping. Anything else you like to do when you rest? Oh, thank you. I was figuring that was coming, watching YouTube. Well, today I want to give you another way to rest, okay? How many? Yes, sir. I watch YouTube. It doesn't really calm me down. It doesn't. I know sometimes YouTube doesn't calm us down. But today I want to tell you, I want to give you a way to rest. How many of you pray? When do you pray? At bedtime? Sometimes we pray at meal times. I'm going to give you a way to pray today. That's not at bedtime or real time. Meal time. When you let them play and blow bubbles, we're going to let our bubbles be our prayer. So I want you to think of some things that you want to pray for. Think of, get them in your head. And then we're going to blow. You can add bubbles. And blow them and send them up to God. Oh. All right, so let's pray. Are you ready? We're gonna do Dear God and we're gonna blow some bubbles. Ready? Dear God, and then we're gonna have our silent prayer. There goes our prayers. And then we can say, um, so, I'm not going to tell you a way to pray and not give you the things you need. Ooh, that one just... You're welcome. Thanks for coming up, everybody. I invite you to please rise as you are able for the gospel acclamation. <laughs>
The Holy Gospel this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told them all they had done. And Jesus said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure, and they had no time to eat. And when they went away in the boat to the deserted place by themselves, now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd. He had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Genereset and moored the boat. And when they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about the whole region and began to bring the sick on mats wherever they, were. they heard he was. And wherever he went, into the villages, cities, or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Come away by yourselves. Come away with me and rest. Does that invitation instill you, in you a sigh and a smile on your face? Or do you grimace a bit and wish you had the time or the luxury to do that? What images do you picture when you hear that invitation? A place on a secluded island? Or maybe it's a cabin in the woods? Or maybe it's by a beach or a seashore? For the disciples, this invitation to come away and rest with Jesus is another lesson Jesus was teaching them about life as a disciple. A disciple then, and for you and I now as well. Now let me set the scene a bit. Jesus and his disciples have been busy. Jesus has been healing people. He's been rejected from his hometown. He's prepared his disciples to go and sent them to be apostles, sent them out to do the work of the kingdom of God. And they have... And they've even heard the news that John the Baptist had just been brutally killed. Jesus and his disciples were carrying the burdens of ministry and the doing and the sending and the healing and the proclaiming. And now they're bearing the burden of grief and loss and presumably anger over John's death. That invitation to Jesus, to his disciples, to come away with me and rest sounds like the appropriate time to rest it. So the disciples go away with Jesus to rest. And if we only read the parts of chapter 6 in Mark's Gospel that the Revised Common Lectionary gave us, we might assume that this was a peaceful retreat of uninterrupted time away. However, let me share the rest of this story. The apostles were gathered around Jesus and they told him all that they had done and taught. And Jesus said, come away to a deserted place by yourself and rest. For many are coming or going and you've had no leisure to even eat. And they went away with Jesus in a boat to a deserted place. Now they didn't sneak away, you see. Those gathered around saw them leave and they knew where he was going. And so they set out on foot from the towns and they were there waiting for them when they arrived on the other side. And Jesus had compassion on them. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach and care for them. It grew late and the disciples came up to Jesus saying, Jesus, send them on their way. This is a deserted place. 
They need to go find places to eat. And Jesus answered them, you give them something to eat. The disciples answered Jesus, Jesus, we don't have enough. Jesus says, show me what you have. Five loaves and two fish. And Jesus took it and blessed it and gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, here, now you feed them. Yep, you feed those 5,000. And the disciples did, and they were fed and filled. Okay, time out here. Does this sound like a respite? But it goes on. Then, immediately, Jesus sent to his disciples, and he sent them across the sea. And Jesus went away to pray. Okay, a nice boat ride. How many of you like nice boat rides? How many of you like the nice boat rides when the wind comes up and the storms start brewing? That's exactly what happened to the disciples. The storm started brewing, and Jesus was praying. He was on land. And he saw the disciples, and he saw they were in distress. And there was a storm brewing around them. And Jesus walked to them, and they were terrified. And Jesus saw this and said, Take heart, it's I. Do not be afraid. After Jesus got into the boat with them, then the storm stopped. And that's when we finally get to the end of today's gospel reading. When they had crossed over, ah, they came to land and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized them, rushed about the whole region, and began to bring sick on mats to wherever they heard Jesus was. And wherever he went into cities and villages or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Today's gospel, if we take it in context, is not this call to get away, to go on vacation, to recharge our batteries until we can face the world again nor is it to totally disconnect from the world and rest. But it calls us to consider rhythms of rest. Beyond sleeping or taking a nap, beyond watching YouTube, but to come away. To come away with God for a time to rest. To renew, to reconnect, and then re-enter into the ministry of work of the kingdom here on earth that the disciples that you and I are sent to be part of. The disciples didn't get a week of vacation, but they did experience holy moments, separate time from Jesus, probably not as long as they would have liked because of the needs of the world that remained. I imagine the disciples were anxious and hoping when they went to Jesus, expecting Jesus would send people away to go get something to eat. They were definitely not asking, expecting Jesus to ask them to figure out how to feed them. But he does. And God provides. Then Jesus wants some time away and time to connect with God the Father and he sends the disciples on their way. And now while they are tossed about, storms came up and they were afraid. Jesus walks on the water in the midst of the storm, saying, take heart, do not be afraid. And they went on and continued to ministry. It doesn't sound like a whole lot of rest to me. But I think in calling us to rhythms of rest, a rest in the midst of the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, God calls us, us to pause, even for a couple of moments, to come away and rest, to be in God's presence, to remember whose and who you are, to recharge a bit, 
to then be ready to re-enter into the world that so desperately needs to experience the love that God has to offer. So, I sent the kids with a prayer and tool for the week. I, would, I want to conclude our time today is with what you could or would, what this could or would look like. I'm not going to say should, but I want to give you an idea of what this could or would look like. Some of you all already may have prayer practices that guide you at home, or you have your daily devotions, or you have your specific prayer with an outline, or reading a devotion book, or daily morning or evening studies, and you do this already, and those are great and wonderful things. But today I want to give you a chance to practice a little prayer that can go with you wherever you go, in your office, in your car, at your desk at school, and I want you to, in a moment, close your eyes. And we're going to pray using our breath and three words. And I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. I promise you, nobody's going to throw anything at you. We're not going to have our eyes lo closed long enough to go to sleep. And nobody's going to look at you because we're all going to have our eyes closed. But we're going to close your eyes, and I want you just to relax your body, and we're going to take a deep breath in. So let's do that now together. And let it out. And we're going to do that one more time. And now, the next time we do this, you can open your eyes for just a moment. We're going to, when we breathe in, we're going to focus our hearts and our minds on Jesus. And we're going to do that by breathing in and thinking in our minds, Jesus, when we breathe in, and when we breathe out, I want you to say two words of truth, loves me. Are you ready? Let's close your eyes. I will guide you through the first couple. And then I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to let you do a couple sessions on your own. I promise I'll bring you back, okay? Here we go. Let's close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath in. And out. And in. Jesus loves me. Breathe out. Breathe in. Jesus loves me. Breathe out. Try it on your own. Amen. Now this little prayer can be quick, but it can be a respite. It can be a quick answer to Jesus' invitation to come away with me and pray. A time to recharge, a time to recenter, and then allow us to re-enter into the world that God has called us to be. I invite you this week to practice this prayer. And practice answering Jesus' call to you to come away and rest. Even just for a moment, fill your heart, fill your soul with the truth that Jesus loves you. And in this love, Jesus sends you to share the good news. Amen.
please rise as you're able for the prayers. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all of creation. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures. Safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary. Comfort those who are grieving and recovery to those who are ill, especially Marilyn, Andrew, Helen, Michelle, Sandy, Cindy, Barb, Kevin, Larry, Doug, Chuck, Terry Ashworth's brother-in-law, Dan, and Cindy Finnegan's mother, Marlis. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith. Grant comfort and peace to Jody Solomon family as they mourn the death of her uncle Merlin. We remember also those whose lives have been lost in service to their country. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We confess together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a non-contact sign of peace with those around you. Of course, you can shake hands and hug those who you came with. <laughs> Let's share peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. You may be seated. As we prepare ourselves for the meal prior to starting our confession and forgiveness, just want to um, give a little direction. When you came, you received a bowl that had communion cups in it. If you are unfamiliar with how these cups work, just a little bit of a reminder. There is a there are two top there are two seals. The first seal is a clear cellophane seal. You will remove that to get to your bread. And then after we have received the bread, you'll remove the purple seal to get to the wine. Let's prepare ourselves with a time of confession and forgiveness. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. 
God has given us a ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and gracious God, have mercy on you. Forgive all your sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We gather around the table. And we hear these words. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to take out your communion elements, and get your bread ready. And here are these words for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. I invite you to remove, prepare your wine. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Beloved people of God, having received and been nourished and fed by the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may you go now strengthened and kept in God's amazing grace. Amen. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Hosanna's Community Garden has been part of the ministry here since 2010. Over the years, several individuals and families who are gifted with green thumbs have a love for working in the garden and a passion for providing fresh vegetables for themselves, the community, and those in need. Today, we wish to acknowledge and give thanks for the commitment to those who care for the garden. So let us give thanks for these folks and others who have been caring for the garden. Let us show the thanks to our applause. All right, well, let us join together in prayer. Creator of all things and giver of all life, you let your blessings fall upon the seeds and bulbs, our hands and tools, our soil and our garden. You have given us seeds to plant, soil in which to hold the seeds and awake them to new life. You provide all that is needed to cause these seeds to grow. We ask you today to bless not only this garden, but those who till it, who plot it, who planted it, and water, weed, 
and will harvest it. Bless the hands that serve and the hearts who receive the bounty of the harvest. And all God's children said, Amen. Now I have been told there is zucchini, uh, uh, and a bountiful crop of zucchini, over as you leave today. There's a cooler. I have also been warned if you don't take some, you may find some in places you may not desire to have them. <laughs> so I would make sure that if you came to church and you had your car door open, car here, you'd probably want to lock it. Um, I don't know. They look like a trustworthy group. Take a zucchini or two. And you know what? I'll, we'll do the set, do the sending song. Thank you so much, you guys. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.